What is going on crypto peeps? So this is actually after the video that you're about to watch. I forgot to do the Bitcoin giveaway. So I'm going to put it in the beginning of the video and then you'll see the start of the video. So let's get right into it. Uh, let us give away some Bitcoin or whatever crypto it happens to be. I think I limited it to Bitcoin, Litecoin and, and Ethereum. Uh, hopefully a comment ends up in the random winner picker thing. Nice. Nice video. What can you say about the prognose from Aidcoin? Uh, nothing yet. So, but I, I can say that I will give you some Bitcoin. So, uh, let me just copy your address. Yeah, I guess I'll do it from Binance. So, put your address in here. I know this Google authentication is uh, is necessary, but it really fucks my life up. <laughs> nice. Oh, I didn't even get the person's name person's name christian winterstein or winterstein sorry for the mispronunciation congratulations thank you so much for supporting the channel uh congratulations on on the bitcoin everybody else leave your crypto addresses in in the comments i will be doing these more especially during the live sessions uh anyway on to the video sorry for the delay congratulations christian peace what is going on crypto peeps so bitcoin ha is having a great saturday hopefully you guys are too um, what I wanted to talk about today is one of the most consistent questions that I get regarding forks and specifically forks where there's an allocation of, of coins that are to be expected. So for instance, with, with Z Classic or Bitcoin, the Bitcoin private fork was going to yield a one-to-one -one distribution of coins. So for every Bitcoin or every Z Classic you held, you would get a Bitcoin private. Uh, same thing is happening with Monero, with the Monero V fork. Uh, they're distributing it, I think, at a 10-to-one ratio. So for every one Monero uh, you hold, you're going to get a, a 10 Monero V per one Monero. So it, it, they're definitely worth it. Um, you know, if, if you want to take, if you hold these the uh the coins that are about to get forked it's definitely worth it to get these free tokens if you're not overextending yourself to get them so like for instance with z classic there was a point where the price of z classic got to like 180 bucks and you know we still don't know what the price of, of bitcoin private is going to be once it hits the market so there was kind of a risk there uh if you were buying 180 dollars z classic which used to be something like five bucks um just to get bitcoin private versus buying bitcoin private on the open market anyway that aside uh, um the discussion is more so what how to like how, what is these steps that you have to take in order to claim these coins. Now, the steps are are theoretically the same for every for every hard fork, right? I'm going to be showing you an example today using the Electrum wallet, which is what was used uh, if you held Z Classic in order to claim your Bitcoin private. Now, this can apply to any wallet that allows you control of your private keys that allows you access your of your private keys but that's the important part so people were asking why do i need a wallet where i control my private keys well i'm going to show you exactly why now let me preface this by saying that there are certain exchanges that will support these hard forks uh, natively so certain exchanges were announced with with bitcoin private if you look at the bitcoin private site uh, you'll see what exchanges those were but it when an exchange natively supports these hard forks you essentially don't have to do anything uh, you could just have your coins on the exchange and you know you'll get the new currency once it's forked um, after the the snapshot is taken and and the currency then hits the market you will see that new currency pop up in your wallet with the allocation amount based on the previous coins that that you held or, or the coins of the of the previous token before the fork that you held so let me briefly go over what is going on with with a fork. I'm not going to go into too much programmatic details or technical details, but just from a high level, because I think it's actually helpful to understand what's going on in order for you to execute this properly. So a hard fork is essentially when the cryptocurrency is split in two as the result of the cryptocurrencies co-changing and it produces a new blockchain and therefore a new co coin or token. A soft fork is essentially the same thing. However, it does not result in a new blockchain or a new coin or token. The intent is that the, the blockchain remains the same. It's just that the code is updated. So an example of, of a soft fork would be like SegWit. And an, an example of a hard fork would be like Bitcoin Gold or SegWit 2X or Bitcoin Cash. Um, and essentially why what's going on when, when a snapshot is taken is a snapshot is taken 
at a certain block number. That's why it's important if you want your free coins for you to have your the, the coins of, of before the fork allocated in the wallet that is going to, to support uh, the hard fork, right? So essentially it'd be a wallet that, that where you control the, the private keys because w w after the snapshot is taken, if your coins aren't in there, you are not getting your, your allocation of, of free coins. So what's important with the snapshot is really the block number and not the date of the snapshot. Yeah, the date gives you a guide as to when it's happening, but the, the snapshot happens at a certain block number. So you have to have your coins in that supporter wallet before the snapshot of that block number is taken. See, the blockchain is just the, a, a ledger, right, of, of transactions. So the transaction has to be recorded that the, the transaction that contains your coins has to be recorded before a snapshot of that block is taken. So that is what it is at a high level. Let us go through an example. Again, I'm going to be using the Electrum wallet uh, because that is the wallet that I recently used uh, as part of the Z Classic Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin private fork. So go ahead and uh you know copy these these keys and you can see my 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 private keys as well there's nothing in here um i don't use this wallet anymore so do do what you will <laughs> um so i just logged into the electrum wallet now let me tell you let me say this that that the process is essentially the same no matter what you're using so as long as you have a wallet that allows you access of your private keys um, then it, the, the process is, is the same. You're just going to have to find the equivalent uh, functions here up, up top um, in the, the wallet that, that you're using. What you want to do is obviously this is your, your public key right here. This is your receiving address. So you would just click receive, copy this, go to Bittrex or Binance or wherever it is that, that you have your, uh, your coins and export it to or send it to, to this address here. So once you have your uh, coins in here, what you want to do then is e export your private keys. So in Electrum, it would be under wallet, private keys, export. In, in other wallets, it might be under file or something else. But, it's, but again, the idea is the same. So you go to wallet, export, uh, put the password if it asks you for it. And it's generating your private keys here. So we wait for it to generate. And here in, in Electrum, and again, it's the same in, in other wallets, but the, the way that this uh, UI is, is laid out, here are your public keys, and these are the private keys that are associated with, with this public key. So as you know, you can generate as many public keys as, as, as your heart desires, right? In, in terms of uh, in, in your wallet. So here are the private keys here. And essentially what you'd wanna do is export this. Uh, you can export it as, as a CSV. So you just click export and it will export a CSV file. And that's it, that's it. So the snapshot is taken once after the snapshot is done and we get confirmation which wallets will support Bitcoin private you would go to the wallet that contains your Bitcoin private and you would import those keys. So in, in Electrum, it, I think you would have to create a new wallet. Um, yeah, so new, let's just go ahead and create a new wallet, standard wallet. And instead of creating a new seed, you would say use public or private keys. Now, this would have to be the wallet that supports this new fork. So it would have to be, in this case, the wallet that supports Bitcoin private. Once you have that wallet, you would then import the private keys that, that you just exported. Um, and that that would be it. So there it is, it's, it's real simple. I know that, that it sounds uh, complicated and you know, for, for people who are used to, to trading, who are equity traders who are used to trading stocks or, or options, it is really complicated because there's like a tech aspect to it. But I just wanted to give you an idea of what is going on with a snapshot, uh, what's going on with a hard fork, and then how just just lay out the basics um, in an agnostic way that, that apply to, to all wallets uh, in, in which you control your, your private keys. So um, if you have any questions, hit me up on the Discord. The Discord is free. Uh, sign up to the Patreon for the trade alerts. 